Yeah, so I'm Jason Vanna. Uh, I founded Shift Agency. It was technically founded in 2019, uh, but really got serious with it in 2021, went full time there. And so that's kind of the, the story of who we are and what we do. <laughs> and and go go deep into that, actually, because I, I yeah. think you're your timing of of the of the uh, pun intended obviously with your name and the shift and everything like that but into the business the b2b side of things and moving around and, and showing companies how they approach their customers kind of what what was your what were you seeing that led to that shift in in creating the, the agency so <laughs> it's actually a funny story i i started the agency on accident um is what i like to tell people because right. What happened in 2019 was I was just looking for a new job. I was in a very rural area um, in Illinois, was trying to move back up to the Chicagoland area. And so my I had jumped onto LinkedIn to update my digital resume because up until that point, that's all LinkedIn was, was a digital resume. And what happened was I, I landed on the feed and noticed that people were actually starting to create content on the platform. And I've been a content creator for decades. And I was like, well, heck, the best way to stand out and get a new job is if I like show people I know marketing and branding. And so I started creating content around that with the, the intention or the goal of landing a new job. And what was happening was I was getting all of these founders in my DM saying, hey, I don't have the money to hire a marketer. I don't have a marketing team. Can I hire your agency to like help me with something? And I'm sitting there like, uh, yeah, the agency that doesn't exist. Um, we <laughs> definitely could do something. And like, I had always done some marketing and branding stuff on the side of a full-time job. Like ever since I had a full-time job, I was doing little bits on the side because where I, where I lived, there really wasn't a marketing agency around like the the closest one was an hour away the better ones were three hours away and so mm -hmm. a lot of companies especially these mom and pop stores needed design work done they needed some messaging help they needed like just branding help and so i would do stuff kind of on the side and what happened was my accountant looked at me um it was in 2019 after doing my 2018 taxes and he was like you're making quite a bit of money on the side. This might be beneficial. Like you could, you could take more deductions and stuff like that if you actually turn this into a business. So in 2019, we technically started because that's when the LLC was formed, for me, or formed, and like that's when all the paperwork is. But it was really more for a, I'm just doing it for tax benefits for some of the side work I did. It was really in like the end of 2020, start of 2021, where I really started to see some traction on these side projects I was doing. It was like, huh, this is something I could probably do full time if I actually like tried to do it full time. And so I spent the end of 2020, yeah, end of 2020, start of 2021 uh, with the goal of, I want to go full time by the end of 2021. Like that's the goal. If it doesn't happen, then I'm just going to go get another job. Like that's what I told right. myself. Uh, but really just having that goal of saying it's the end of 2021 or I blow everything up and I'm done really got me to the point of like, okay, this is a legit business. This is what I'm trying to do. This isn't just a tax write off anymore. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of how it, it started. And, and really a lot of what happened was I would get these founders coming to me saying things like, I need a new website. I need Facebook ads. I need like a brochure made, you know, whatever it might be. And I would just ask him some basic questions like, okay, why should anyone buy from you as opposed to your competitors? You know, what, what is what I call your differentiation? What is that thing that you do differently? Um, and I would ask them like, who are we targeting? Who are the people that are best going to buy your product? And most of them would be like, well, anyone. I'm like mm, that's not how business works there bud and so what was happening was they would come to me for all this like marketing tactical stuff that they needed and i realized you don't even know your brand you don't know that brand strategy if this is the unique value we bring to the market and this is how we flush it out and everything from our marketing our sales to our offer like what the product actually is down to finance and customer service and all that kind of stuff they had no idea 
what was the unique thing that they brought to the market. And so that's kind of when the light bulb went out off or went on for me off went on for me to say what i really need to focus on because i've done i've been a, a basically a cmo for for years like i've done marketing for decades and i was like i anything that could be done in marketing i have done um and so it was like really what happened was that light bulb went off and said while I can do Google ads while I can do website design while I can do content and all this stuff really the value that I'm going to bring is hyper focusing on this brand strategy brand design kind of side like let's help figure out why people buy from you and develop this kind of what I call a whole company strategy it's really a brand strategy but really it's a whole company strategy to help people feel that differentiation mm -hmm. so that's kind of how how this started it's a weird story like most people i talk to and they found their business they're like i realized that this was a need and i just went all in i was tired of working my full-time job and i was like i kind of stumbled into it by accident it was a happy accident but i kind of <laughs> stumbled into it by accident until i realized like oh this thing is legit i really can make some money doing this and that's when i went in like and was like i'm going full time with this within a year or i'm blowing everything up and i'm done um but yeah it's a really unique story and it all came from linkedin contact <laughs> that's that's awesome tell me i mean that's that's how we that's how we met too so that's even better yeah. tell me about um kind of some story like any success stories of some you don't have to give any names of the client if you don't want yeah. to but some awesome you know unique things that were done over the past few years and I, I always love when uh, when creatives like yourself also have the balance of strategy because it's it's a very fun uh, way to watch them build their businesses when they have that balance. So I, I'm right. sure you can do everything from a blank canvas all the way through. So yeah, let me know, let me give me some uh, give me some highlights. Uh, the my favorite story came from like a, a brand strategy we just finished a few weeks ago. Um, it was uh, for a comms agency that works primarily with nonprofits. Um, she kind of had a, a little bit similar journey to, to mine, didn't start the business by accident, but she was, she was acting as like a head comms person for a, a nonprofit and realized that like, while most nonprofits act a lot like businesses, they hyper-focus on the tactical. We need to, we've got this project or this initiative, so we need content, we need this, we need that, you know, it's all that kind of stuff. And what she realized was that if the organization actually got back to its primary mission and purpose, like, and really, really created visibility around that instead of programs, they would get more funding, they would get more support, they would have more people like uh, wanting to volunteer for the organization, all that kind of stuff. And that's kind of when she had her light bulb moment and was like, I'm going to start my own agency and do this and help nonprofits actually get back to that. And so what happened was she started the agency. And I think this is true for a lot of founders because she knew how to do so much. She was offering everything. I can do comm strategy. I can do content uh, strategy and creation. I could be your fractional uh communications officer i can like the list of stuff that she could do was was pretty long um and she was just kind of struggling to like generate leads and and really understand like how do i talk about my business i don't understand what's going wrong and so we all we did with her i did no design with her anything it was all strategy side but what happened in the workshops was we when we do a brand strategy, we look at your competitors. So I looked at her competitors, other comms agencies, and they all kind of looked and sounded the same. They all offered the same kind of stuff, thought, leadership, content. We come up with your comms strategy. And I was like, you're not going to stand out in a sea of agencies that are the same. And so we really dove down into like, what makes your company unique? Like, why should people buy from you as opposed to you know get on google type in communications agency there's hundreds thousands of them like why you and really what we uncovered was that she can do comm strategy and she does it very well but the real benefit that she brings is she's got a network of connections that she can connect your nonprofit to people and organizations that can really boost the visibility so um i i asked her like okay what do you mean by that who's someone that you could connect my nonprofit to and she's like well two of my clients 
are in kind of the political sphere, like they're, they're political nonprofits. So I'm connecting them to Kamala Harris. And I was like, there is nowhere on your website, nowhere in your content where you're telling me that you can connect me as like, if I'm a, a nonprofit, uh, the executive director of a nonprofit, mm -hmm. that you can connect me to the vice president of the United States of America. Like, I was like, this is your differentiation. This is what we need to wrap your entire business around. And so we we took all of our offering and said, you're scratching all of this. What you're going to do is your, she had like a journalistic deep dive into the organization, understanding why it existed, what the problems were with communication, all that. So it's like, you're going to do your, your journalistic discovery. You're going to do a communications roadmap doesn't have to be a full strategy because that's not even what you're selling. That's mm -hmm. the, that's kind of the hook. People are going to come to you for the strategy. So you're going to give them a roadmap. It's going to have the basics of a strategy, but really what you're selling are the connections. That's what, that is going to be the primary focus of everything. So when I say like your differentiation to, to like own your differentiation or to embed it throughout your company, um, one of the examples was like, we obviously wrote messaging for her that highlighted this fact that, you know, we're going to connect you. And I was like, talk is great, but if we can display this somehow to, to really drive this, this point home, that's, what's going to get people to want to work with you. So one of the things I said was on your homepage, you're going to have a section for connections. And it's going to say something along the lines of like, you know, these are just some of the organizations and individuals we've connected our clients to. And then I want to see the logos of the individuals and the organizations, like the big ones that people know. I want to see those listed out there. And I told her, create a database of these connections so that you can easily say, I have 500 connections in my database and put that in there. I can connect you to over 500 organizations and individuals that are going to boost the visibility of your mission and, and purpose. And I was like, think about this for a minute. If I'm a nonprofit and I'm like, I don't know how to talk about my nonprofit. I need a comm strategy. And I land on your website and I scroll down and there's this section where I see you can connect me to the VP of the US. Like, why would I work with any other comms agency? <laughs> For a nonprofit, the goal is the more people know about us, the more money we're going to make. So imagine scrolling through, even if you don't want to be connected to Kamala Harris, like, you know, if you're not a political uh, nonprofit or if you have ideological differences than she does, you know, take that off the, the plate here. But if you see, like, you can connect me to the VP of the United States of America. I'm not going to even look at any other comms agency because none of them can say that. And so that's what I mean. Like we uncovered that, that unique thing that she was already doing. She just didn't see it as the thing to wrap her whole business around. She was like trying to be everything to everyone. And I was like, screw that. This is what you sell. This is what you're going to focus on. She's creating, um, some lead magnets around it. She's going to have content around it. I'm like, this is what it looks like to have everything revolve around this connection. And then I said, like, like you're not ready for this yet. Build your business first. But five years down the road, I could see you having some kind of platform that you charge for that people sign up for. They can get in there. They can see some of these connections. They can get connected to them, that kind of stuff. I'm like, that's like down the road stuff where now you're making recurring revenue just from the connections. Um, because I even asked her like, of everything that you do and say that you can do, what do you actually want to do? Because while you can do it all, like for me, I can do Google ads, I can do Facebook yeah. ads, drives me nuts. I hate doing it, I, I loathe them. And so I'm like, can I do it? Yes, do I want to? Not at all. I don't want to learn it. I don't want to become an expert in it. That's That doesn't give me passion. That doesn't drive me. Um, and I, I asked the same thing of her. And she was like, honestly, the thing I love is the connection side. And I was like, so what we're going to do is create a strategy for you that at some point you're even able to get rid of the comms strategy part and you are just a serial connector. And that's what you sell. And you're not even doing comm strategy anymore. You're just the connector 
for nonprofits. It's going to take a while to get there. You're going to have to do some strategy. You're going to have to get like, there's a, a path to that. And I was like, but what this path lays out is you're selling the connections and eventually that's all you have to sell. It was like, when I get excited, I mean, I'm kind of doing it already. When I get excited, yeah. like my hands go like this, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I got a great idea. <laughs> I cannot tell you how many times working with her, I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, great idea. Like, because it was just such a, it was something she was already doing, but wasn't highlighting. And I'm like, if we flip this whole thing upside down and say, you are the serial connector and this is what we're going to sell, everything else now, I can, I can push out like a a strategy in an hour for that right because we got your one thing and now we know like if we want people to think of you this way this is everything we need to do and so that was one of my one of my favorite now we just finished the strategy a few weeks ago so she's still working on implementing it like doing it on our website and, and all that kind of stuff um another one that we worked with um Easily my favorite up until the comms agency <laughs> um, was um, we worked with a company that does uh, basically they they come into construction companies and excuse me manufacturing companies and build out the processes so the founder isn't involved in the day to day anymore. Nice. It's primarily like family owned companies, you know, smaller smaller construction and, and manufacturing companies and really just trying to get the owner to not have to work 12 hour days anymore. Um, and so with them, well, I was like, what we found as their differentiation was that they don't come in. Most consultants, if they're going to work with your company, they come in and the CEO is like the primary focus or the founder or the owner, or, you know, whatever label they have is the primary focus. They're the, they're the main contact. They're the one that, that spends all their time working with the um, working with the consultant. They flipped it and said, "We're not going to take twenty hours of your week uh, or of your day every twenty hours of your time every week because you don't have it. So what we're going to do is we're going to work directly with your employees, figure out what works for them, what like what the job description should be, like what the processes should be, whatever, and then once a week." We'll do an update with you, get your feedback and insight and start building this out. So it's minimal amount of time on your end because you're already swamped, but we're getting you what you need. What we also found for them um, just in the like uncovering who their ideal customers were is that a lot of their ideal customers have already worked with some kind of consultant that didn't give them any practical help. It was all like, <laughs> and I think like you chuckle because we've all been there. We've all worked with the consultants. I've been, the, I've been doing this. I've been doing this for twenty years, and I keep telling people, I, I don't, I don't pay for other other idiots' sins. <laughs> yes, yes, and like so, so a lot of them were very hesitant to sign, and their their offer was like a thirty three thousand dollar offer, which for a small manufacturing company or construction company is a big chunk of money. When you're not actually getting something physical, you're not getting a piece of equipment, you're not getting like a new truck or whatnot, you know, it's theory, it's strategy. Yeah, they're kind of like, yeah, they're, they're like, ah, so I told them like, one of the things you need to do is instead of doing a discovery call, uh, and let me back up and say this, their sales cycle was a six month sales cycle. When someone booked a discovery call to the time that they either signed a contract or said, we're not going to do this was six months and that was one of the main problems they hired us to solve and so in this i was like well instead of doing a discovery call because that's just going to feel like you're you're pitching strategy what if you did a strategy a free strategy session and out of this you identify two to three like main problems within the company and you gave them two or three pieces of practical tactical advice if you do this thing you will see this kind of result. And then at the end of the call, you give them just a small document. This doesn't have to be like a massive report because it's a discovery call. You're doing this for free. You know, I'm not expecting you to solve all their problems, but give them one or two like pieces of practical, tangible advice that they can try implementing to see if the, it actually makes a difference. Because that's really what, what's happening is they need to see that the advice you give actually produces something. Their sales cycle, that's, they implemented that 
and they implemented the messaging that we had given them. Um, they made some tweaks to their website, implemented the messaging. Those are the only two pieces of the strategy that they implemented. In less than two months, they landed three clients um, on the $33,000 uh, contracts. So they made just under $100,000 within two months of finishing a strategy with us. They don't even have, even to today, this was like June of last year that we worked with them. Um, they still don't have the whole thing implemented yet. Everything we told right. them. Even if they, they, they only implemented that progress, they're, yeah. they're going to quadruple and 5X, 10X their, yes. their money. Yeah. Yes. And then they came back to me because they're like, okay, Jason, now we have this new problem because yes. our offer, yeah, their offer was they spend six weeks on site with their clients to get to know the team and, and all that stuff. And they're like, we landed three clients back to back. That is 18 weeks of us being on site. And we started this business so we could work when we want, where we want. So we were like, okay, this was a problem we didn't foresee. So we did an extra workshop to determine like, how do you take this mostly on site project and turn it, or at least the, the onboarding was mostly on site, you know, six weeks of getting to know the team. And then mm -hmm. it was, it's typically a nine month process, but like first six weeks was on site. I was like, how do we take that and make it all virtual? So you don't have to be on site or we can minimize the on site. So you can take on more clients um, and work where, when and where you want. And so what we did is dwindled it down to a week on site so that they get to meet all the team members, talk through the process, get whatever they, they like to do like one-on-one -on -one interviews and stuff right, like right, that. Yeah. I was like, I was like, you can do that through Zoom and schedule them all while you're there, but you don't need to do the interviews one-on-one -on -one in person and they're like yeah that makes sense and i'm like sometimes as a business owner you just don't see the little things that that can actually help you scale and so exactly. we did that and now they're like we love our life we love our business it's growing so it's just it those two for me um they weren't our biggest clients they weren't like we didn't do a lot of uh design or websites or any of that kind of stuff for them um but they're my favorite because one just the the for the comms agency that differentiation i was like there is no other comms agency saying this you are unique in this like and we're gonna double down on that uniqueness and and it was just a fun project to work on um and the other one was more i love the result that they got from it like i don't know and, and i wish i could say every client had that kind of results within two months now when we only do strategy, implementation is on the client, you know? That's so, yeah. So sometimes it's like, there's some clients I'm still sitting here, like implement <laughs> what I gave you and you're going to see results. And they're you know? telling so, you, they're telling you, I paid you this money and nothing's happened. Yeah. It's like, well, you well, haven't executed yet. <laughs> well, actually, so the weird part is most of them haven't said that. Um, oh, because they're just they, happy they, with the deliverable and everything. Yeah, they, they were happy yeah. with like, maybe they changed some of the messaging or whatever, but they haven't like fully gotten it throughout the company yet. And they're seeing some results, but not, it was a, it was a 1400% ROI mm -hmm. for that company. And I'm like, that was all brand. There was no design in that. There was no marketing in that. I like, we didn't do Google ads or lead generation. That was 100% knowing your differentiation knowing your ideal customers and developing a strategy for that like that brings all that together and they saw results i'm like this is what brand strategy does if you even implement just a small part of it it can blow your business up in a good way um, yeah it's it's um it's interesting that you you brought up that whole like um essentially professional connector and and that's like one of the things that i think people don't realize is like uh it was an old uh it was an old thing we all took for granted. And I was one of those, I've been one of those my entire life. I was always, I always had a guy for something and always, you know, right. everybody came to me to find out who's, who's the guy for this or that and everything like, and it was always random stuff. It wasn't always, it wasn't even one niche that's evolved into what my business is. I've had a diverse portfolio of clients over the time and there had never really stayed in one specific area. And I was like that in school. I was always never really in one specific click. I always floated around all the time. What I'm trying to get at is, I really appreciate what your approach is to the strategy of of realizing that like 
you know, I was on the conversation with somebody a couple of weeks ago in, in this podcast about you can throw money at anything. You know what I mean? Like, but and like yeah. I could like people are always like people will come and they have these meetings and they'll be like, OK, well, what can you do for me? I'm like, I can do anything you want. But at the first time is how much money you're going to be able to spend or how much do you want to give in a commission? Because I'm also confident in what I can do. So like I'll work, I'll work, I'll make my money on the back end as long as I can control the whole process. Now there's, there's the catch is like, I'll, I'll do commission work if I control the whole process. Other than that, you have to pay, you know, you pay whatever you pay and, and it, it's, it pays accordingly. What I'm getting at is, is the strategy you take in, in making people realize that like, I've blown people away sometimes where they've been like, I could, I'll uh, 50 grand, let's spend 50 grand. And I'll be like, well, that's great. But I think actually we can have more results with spending 25 grand. And they're like, what do you mean by that? And I have to go through and, and really explain to them, like, this is what an agency would normally would do, which is say, oh, great, 50. I, I it really was only going to cost 25. and I, But I'm going to go with 50 because that's what you said and you showed your hand. And that's the fucking game that I hate. And I, I don't mind cursing at all. And I've been in this for 20 years. Yeah. And I go into this and I say this to people. I say, the fastest way we're going to get to success is you tell much how much money you sustainably want to spend on marketing every month and i'll build you what the most successful opportunity is for that how am i going to do that because i've been doing this for 20 years like it's right. like and it's like and i don't have to sit here and sell you on me like you can google me and you can find this out it sounds arrogant and it sounds cocky but it's a fact it's and true it's, and it's where i'm like i tell people i'm like we could spend the next six to eight months i have a i have a client right now that's that's just been it's been four months of just positive conversations but no trigger is being pulled or execution and it's one of those things where it's a massive opportunity for them and it's a timing opportunity and every week i remind them that like it's not going to affect my business whether or not we do this like i'm still going to do my life and still going to like i'm not i don't need right. to do this project but every week i'm reminding you i'm like this is free advice for you that if you don't do it now, you're not going to need, you shouldn't even spend a dollar doing it in for the next 12 months and right. trying to show people that strategy and that timing and that window and being honest and vulnerable with them and saying like, I'm not here to rip you off and, and like actually show them because at the end of the day, what I found is if, if they say 50 and I've, I know that I could do it for 25, it's not to skimp myself out because a good client will save that other 25 for your other idea. Right. Well, and that's, and, that's where the magic happens is when you when you connect with a client like that, that is proactive right. and isn't just taking the menu item and saying, I'll take a, a, two hot dogs, a fry and a large Coke. You know, that's that's like consulting 101. And that's what you know. But it, when you really get a client that's thinking through that way, that's magic. Yeah. And and kind of to your point, like I say this a lot in my discovery calls where I had one like this yesterday where the guy came in and he's like, yeah, like I've got all these different businesses that I'm a part of and I'm just kind of starting my own and blah, blah, blah. And I need to know how this works and stuff. And I was like, well, great. Like maybe what we need to do is start, like he wanted just LinkedIn ghostwriting help. It's something that we provide because most of our clients are B2B and so LinkedIn is the platform for them. So mm -hmm. then we also offer it as like, if you just want the LinkedIn help, we can do that too. Um, but he kind of came in for that, started talking brand. And I was like, I'm a branding agency. Like LinkedIn is like the 10% of what we do. Um, right. So so I was talking through all this. And then he was like, well, we're actually, I'm kind of working on this with my mentor and stuff. And I was like, I don't know your mentor. I don't know if this is good. But I was like, here's the thing. Not to talk you out of giving me more money. Because I suck at sales when I say that. Not to talk <laughs> you out of giving me more money. But if you're already doing that, finish it with them. And then we can start the LinkedIn stuff and we'll look through what they gave you. And if they're missing something that we need, we can just add that into the strategy and, and focus there instead of making you go through my process again, just to get you one or two extra things that maybe the other person didn't, didn't do for you. I'm like, there's, there's this sense of if you actually know your stuff, mm -hmm. you don't really need to push people into offers that they don't need. Like you're not gonna want to do that. Cause it's like, I look at that too to myself and I'm like, dude, if I put you through my process, you're gonna walk away and be like, well, I didn't really get much from that because I already mm -hmm. had some of that. I already knew my differentiated, like someone else already helped me with that. So you're pushing me onto something that maybe you give me one or two other ideas that I didn't have before. And I'm like, that's just gonna, make you look at me and be like, oh, that was lackluster. 
<laughs> and I don't want that. I want like when you work with us, I want you to be like, holy shit, shift is amazing. Like they churned my business around. Like that's the aha, that's the like end of the game road I want with all of our clients. Like, holy crap, my business is different now because of shift. And if if that doesn't happen, or if that can't happen because you already have the pieces that you need and stuff, then I don't want to sell you on it. Keep your money. I want you to have more of that experience of this changed my company and this was well worth like my goal, which is weird. Most founders would never say this, but my goal is that people end their engagement with us and say, I should have paid you double. You're right. You should have. That's the quality level. I will not that it isn't priced correctly for the value, but I want it to feel like, holy crap, I got two times worth of the value to what I paid for. Because obviously, like I creep my prices up over time. Like I'm going to be doing a price hike here again soon. But I want that feeling of I got way more than I paid from paid for from them. Um, because that tells me we really nailed. We really nailed that project on the head and we gave you the right offer for what you actually needed. And they were able to see the value. You know what I mean? Yeah. The value wasn't tied to the tangible asset of the finances. And it was right. actually the value of what you provided. And I think there's, it's an, it's uncomfortable, you know what I mean? When you're doing this with new clients and stuff like that, because it's everybody's still very archaically in, in, the, um, in the way the process is and the submissions and stuff like that. And people don't understand, like I tell people, when I do the whole, like, give me the budget, it's, it's because of exactly what you're saying is if, if you, if you tell me that you can only spend $1,500 a month and you only want cold calling, but my whole system is a system. And if you only want one, one, one spoke of the wheel of the system. And then at the end of the three months, you're like, well, that didn't really work. That was a waste of money. Or that wasn't, or you did exactly what you said you were going to do. Not more than that. And that's like, I go back to it every time and I tell people, it's like, I am done selling the a la carte menu. It's no yeah. longer, the world doesn't exist that way. Because if all I'm doing is hammering the phone on your for your brand, then that's not going to work. If all I'm doing is going driving around all over God's green earth and pulling doors for you, that's not going to work. You know, if all I'm doing is email, that's not going to work. Blah, 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 blah. It has to be an omni-focused approach and an omni-channel approach to every single thing you're doing because... <clears throat> There's no other way to get through to a consumer and to really make any sort of an impact, whether it's B2B or B2C, it doesn't matter um, because everybody's inundated in their in their emails and stuff like that. And for me, you know, it started to turn into also like this podcast is talking about being the differentiator because, you know, my emails started to sound like, you know, my intro emails to people started sounding like everybody else's, you know, and now where it is with AI as well, it's like everybody's really looking like everybody else. And it's the black and white is the black and white. And you know, it's uh, to live in the gray is to be unique these days, and uh, and that's where I think the there's a lot of magic for the future of of what that is. And i I appreciate I appreciate your philosophy and your approach to to helping people with their strategy. It's really understanding that there's a spirit that's outside of the brand and the color and the hue and the design, and that spirit yeah. is actually more important than all the other stuff. Because yeah. like somebody could hand you a million dollars and you could create a million dollar, I mean, a million dollar ad and a million dollar logo, but it doesn't mean shit if there's nothing behind it. Right. And the people just want to, and the PR, everybody, everybody that's, that sits there, wears the t-shirt and has the polo shirt on, but hates their life. You know, what, right. what is, what, whose money was well spent there, you know? And then it's why I call like a brand, like most people don't understand what brand is first of all yeah. um brand strategy for most people they don't like they know brand as logos fonts colors maybe some messaging brand strategy for a lot of people that i talk to is brand new and so the way i like to describe it is kind of to your point of this omni channel style is it really is a whole company strategy like it i, I like i think it was marty newmeyer who said like the the brand strategy really is the customer customer facing side of your business strategy. And so when, when I talk to other marketers or I talk to CEOs or like, especially in the enterprise level, most of them, like I did a post two, three years ago now 
um, where I basically said branding is not a marketing tactic. And I did this like um, org chart where it's the CEO, you've got the line down and the CBO, the chief branding officer kind of sits off to the side. And then you've got the CMO and the COO and everyone else. And I had so many marketers be like, that's just a load of crock. The CBO isn't a real position. And I was like, I'm sassy Jason on LinkedIn. So I like did a search for chief branding officer. There was like a hundred thousand on LinkedIn. And so I took that link set at it as the comment. And I was like, yep, made up hundred thousand people have a made up job. Yeah. You're totally correct. Um, but I think what happens is a lot of people see brand as a function of marketing. It is the color it is the feel it's the personality and that's true that all of that stuff are components of a brand but a brand strategy really is what is that unique value that you're bringing to the market and how do you orient your entire business around that so whether i get an email from your sales team or i call in and talk to someone or i do a demo or i see your ad i'm on your website you know, I, I'm consuming your content on your, your blog post or your, your social media. Um, when I onboard, when I go through your, your process or your product, or I'm using your platform, whatever that might be, to when I offboard and, and what does that look like? All of those things create a perception of your business. Like, I like to use this example. It's, it's a crazy example, but, but I like it because it shows just how much everything impacts your brand is if you have a physical location, if it's a store or an office that people are coming to and your garbage cans are overflowing, that might not be something someone looks at and is like, oh, I'm not going to work with them because their garbage can is overflowing. But it sends a subconscious message that you don't have your shit together. You can't even manage getting garbage cans emptied out. So why would I give you $100,000? Why would I give you $20,000? You can't manage a garbage can. How can you manage what I do? And I, I think like most people don't see that as brand, but that is very much brand strategy because anything that could create a perception about you, your business or your product offer service, whatever it might be, that is part of brand. Like I love using... I shared this example. It's a very personal example um, in a few podcasts that I've been on recently. So um, last year, I ended up moving back into my mom's house. She had some some very serious health issues, couldn't live alone anymore. So um, I had a two-story house. She has a one-story. It's just easier for her. So moved in here. This has been This house has been in the family since 1960. It has been insured by State Farm since 1960. Now, State Farm will say, look at any ad, look at anything they put out, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Unless in the last six years, you've had three claims on your house of wind damage or hail damage to the roof, you had a hot water heater explode and flood your basement, and you had wind damage that tore off some of the siding and you needed new siding. Then State Farm looks at you and says, screw you, we're not going to cover you anymore. Now, I don't care how much your marketing says you're a good neighbor, your policies, something most people don't even consider a branding thing, the policies for your insurance, like the, your insurance policies or your, or your processes and your operations, most people look at that and like, that's not a branding thing. Branding doesn't need to touch that. But when your marketing team says, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there, and then your policy says three strikes, you're out, I don't <laughs> care what you see in your ads, you're not a good neighbor. The State Farm brand to me is 100% destroyed. You are not a good neighbor. You are dicks is who you are. Mm -hmm. um, now, I, li I like to kind of end the story this way. Does it matter that I don't like their brand? State Farm is a huge company. They make millions. Even me talking negatively about them on podcasts isn't going to cause them to like, oh my gosh, we lost $1 billion this month because Jason Vanna didn't like us. That, it's not going to happen. But if you run a small business, you better believe that your policy is not lining up with your marketing, that your operation is not producing what you're saying it produces. That will destroy your business. State Farm has the benefit of billions of dollars they don't need me as a customer 
and it, it is more insurance is more of a commodity product and so i get it's a little different but if you are a b2b company and you are a small to medium-sized business you better believe that if your policies are producing one kind of perception people are going to believe that far more than they believe anything that's on your website, anything your salespeople say, if I start using your product and all of a sudden you're like, well, now I got to charge you for this and I got to charge you for that. And oh, we can't cover this. We can't do that. All of a sudden you're like, this brand is shit. And they never mm -hmm. say, uh, I think this is why some people struggle to understand what brand is, is because no one ever says your brand is shit. They say you are shit or your product is shit. Like, and, and, but really what they're saying is this brand, this perception I have of you in my brain, because of all the interactions I had with your company says, I don't trust you. I don't like you. You're not worth the, the money that you're charging. And I don't want to work with you. That's a very negative perception to have when your operations and your processes and policies don't match up to what your marketing is saying. It's why I will die on the hill saying that brand is not a marketing thing and in, it, it should not be owned by the marketing team. Your brand should be owned by the CEO or the CBO if you're big enough to and, and smart enough, I guess, to hire a CBO. Um, it should be owned there because I don't know any company where the marketer is able to go into operations and say, hey, we kind of need to change that. I've been in companies like that and they've said, they've looked at me as the, the marketer and been like, stay in your lane, dude, this isn't you. And I'm like, actually, I'm a brander. So this all is me, the interior right. design, the manufacturing, the delivery, like all of it should fall under me to make sure that it's all giving this right perception. Um, but that's that's really what a brand strategy is. And it it is, it's why, um, so I'm friends with a lot of other brand strategists. I love brand strategy. It's what I'm passionate about. But I look at some other branding agencies and they do your typical, we'll do a strategy, we'll do logo, sponsor, design, website, we'll give you the design and that's it. And so a it's lot of times- in a box. Yeah, a lot of times when I get people coming to me like, well, why should we work with Shift? My big thing is like, you're not, you're not getting a, let me phrase it this way. You will get a nice looking brand design from us if we do your brand design. But really what we're going to do is give you a whole company strategy to align every single department so that you generate revenue faster. And yeah, I can add a logo onto that too. So I like most agencies will be like, yes, we do all this so we can give you this awesome logo and this awesome website. And I'm like, screw that stuff. Because even if, if, if you don't hire me to do that, I can point you to other designers that can do that mm -hmm. for you. Like no big deal. You can do the website internally. I don't care. What I care about is we have your team aligned around. This is the core message. This is the core value. This is the, the perception you want people to have. And what needs to happen in sales, marketing, operations, product development, um, service, even HR. Like I have sat down as a brand strategist and been like, this is what you need to change in your HR policies because you're hiring the wrong people and the wrong people impact your brand. It impacts your, the perception of your company. Um, and so it, it really yeah. is everything. It really, it really is. And it's, it's actually, I want people to understand too that it's not as complicated as you can make it like you can yes. make it very complicated and i can think of uh, other times uh, at different scales like i i remember doing a, a brand uh strategy or not a strategy and the extent the extent you were doing we were doing a basic rebrand of a company and at the very last minute um everybody was gung-ho about everything and it was, i was just like i said to them i said you know what before we before we close out and and, and go to production on this like, let's bring the department heads from accounting over. Let's bring the apartment head from of operations over. Let's bring a driver over. Let's bring all these people and let's kind of, let's put them in a room separately and then once together and do like a quick focus group. Like, again, nothing complicated. Everybody comes up for freaking five minutes. You know what I mean? You can get as much information. Like, you don't need to complicate it and formalize the whole thing. So I started doing that with that. Then I was I worked with them as as a brand manager, is filtering the products that were coming into their portfolio. It was a distribution wholesaler, and so once we came through that, we ended up changing the whole logo. Um, 
based on all the feedback we were getting from those people. So then from that point, I then used that same crew and did the same process for every single incoming product because at one at that point I was choosing by myself because nobody else cared what was coming in and they were just happy with my right. decisions. And it's one of those, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I had to step outside myself and realize you're one person. Like you're not like, who the hell are you? Who the hell do you think you are? If you're going to use your taste and your impression as, as the defining factor for this business. So anyway, uh, long story short is uh, it started to be like a tasting panel and a, and a committee that didn't have a vote. That so they didn't have a vote, like they didn't have a vote where they like, couldn't control my end decisions or any of our end decisions, but they could influence it with their contextual opinions. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't they didn't have any power, and they knew they didn't have any power at the end, but they knew that their opinion had power. So that's that allowed them to just focus on their opinion, and I, I intentionally did that psychologically because I wanted to extract the power control out of the whole thing. Because we, being that everybody was a department head, there was a lot of like. There was a lot of, uh, you know, my opinion is better than yours and, you know, all that corporate right. stuff that comes out. I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, I was able to take what I felt like was what a company, what a company would charge, what I would have, should have, could have charged, let's say, what I could have charged like $100,000 instead. And, 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 and really, but instead I did it in like 30 minutes each time something came up, it was impromptu, it was casual and everybody was relaxed and gave their real honest raw authentic opinion and they knew they didn't have to fill out a report they didn't know they knew there was no paperwork there was no follow up emails it was like come in here expend, expunge your opinion about this specific thing inside this room and then forget about it when you leave and that, that brought like um such a realness to to the experience and it brought a real understanding and i appreciate where you go with is sometimes generally like HR can be like the stale thing that everybody's afraid of, but it's it, it it's the it's the it's the nose and then the tail of the dog. You know what I mean? Right. And they need to they need to meet every once in a while. Well, it's, <laughs> it's why even when we do brand strategies, um, now we do some for smaller companies, like it might be a solopreneur, or just like a, a three four person team. Um, but for the the larger companies that we work with, we do require department heads from every department to be in the workshops um and the the reason i like when a, a client or a prospect asks me like well do you really need hr in there do you really need accounting in there um like i always turn to them and it's like well your hr team and your accounting team have insights that you're not pulling from that's exactly so, why like, their brains work, everybody their brains work differently exactly like we we had we worked with a client this was two three years ago now and um it was funny because they hired it was a, a family-owned company that got acquired by a private equity firm um they had about 100 employees i think something like that and the 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 private equity company hired a vp of marketing who's actually who hired us so she had been in the company for about a month then they they installed the new ceo um who had been in the company maybe two weeks by the time we started the project so um like they knew nothing about the company you know and and i told the the vp of marketing i was like we want to have sales marketing of anyone on the c-suite that wants to be involved uh, but the ceo needs to be there um i want customer service and i want product in the room because your salespeople are going to have a better understanding of this than your ceo and look, well everyone in the company is going to have a better understanding than the ceo because <laughs> he's been there like three weeks but um what happened was so part of our process we like to we like to help our clients figure out what is the label what's the category they're going to play in so like for me when people ask like you know what is shift it's a brand positioning agency i chose that label for a reason um so what is that label we're going to call you and the ceo is kind of one of these guys that was a little bit of a bulldozer and i i don't know if it was on on purpose or if that a lot of people in the room were like new ceo got to impress him don't want to like contradict it like those kind of dynamics play when you're in a workshop and so he came out they were they are an energy and sustainability SaaS company so they tie to municipalities and and like universities tie all the energy meters together can monitor their sustainability efforts all this stuff and it ties in with the accounting and billing and all that it, it was actually a pretty cool uh product that they had um, they were the, the category leaders, actually the category founders at the time, all this kind of stuff. So 
the CEO is like, we are an energy and sustainability solution. That is what we are. That is what we're going to call ourselves. And the, the VP of marketing is like, yeah, that, that makes sense. I'm like, you are just trying to impress a CEO and that is the wrong advice. So I was like, so I want to rethink this because like I pulled up Google and I was like, I type in energy and sustainability and a solar panel manufacturer shows up. So is a solar panel manufacturer your competitor? Well, no. Then that's not the category we're going to call you. You're not an energy sustainability <laughs> solution. We got to find something else. And one of their sales teams, so they had like their VP of sales and then one of just their, their sales people in the workshop. The, the just the salesperson is like, well, the way I've been describing it to people on calls is we're an energy and sustainability ERP. Now, I don't know if your audience knows what an ERP is. It's kind of just a, a management process kind of system to, to manage everything. All of their clients have an ERP, know what an ERP is. And their platform, when you look at it from that, that high level, it is an energy and sustainability ERP. That's how it functions and i was like that is a better response so we pulled it up in google none of their competitors there was maybe like 10 results at the time it wasn't even a full page worth of results under energy sustainability erp none of them were their their direct competitors it was more like a one-off consultant or or whatever and i was like this is what you call yourself from a low level salesperson versus the ceo this is why when I say you have to do like branding as a whole company process, this is why I say that and why you should have more than just a marketer and the CEO in the room talking about the brand because you're going to miss something that your frontline BDR, SDR mm -hmm. is going to know because they're the ones talking with the customers and they're the ones saying things and seeing like, oh, the light bulb went off for them when I said it this way. So now I'm going to say that. And how much more powerful is it when I see on your website, you're an energy and sustainability ERP, your salespeople are saying it, all of your content, all of your materials say it. That's a much more powerful move than, yeah, one of our salespeople uses this label because he sees it actually works. Right. This is why it's a whole company process and why you need more people. Like there's been some companies smaller, you know, maybe 10, 12 people that I said, bring everyone in, everyone in on the workshops, because in a company like that, you don't have just the marketer. You have the marketer who's also this, who's also that. And you've got the salesperson who also does this and everyone wears multiple hats. So get them all in the room. They all have different perspectives on the product. They all use it differently. Um, they've all explained it differently. So let's get them all in the room and figure out what resonates with everyone in the room based on the insights they've seen, based on what we've learned about your ideal customers, what actually is going to work that you all get excited about. It's like, yes, that's the language we use moving forward because it, it like when they started using energy and sustainability ERP, they found that they didn't have to explain as much as before because understanding what an ERP is and then tacking that on, that answered a ton of the questions that their customers had and like how does this help how do yeah. i know what an erp is i know what it does if you're saying you're this 100 i i have a better understanding of what your product is and how your product can serve us just with a label not even a message a label this is what we are that's the power of making it like a full company process I, Jason, I appreciate you taking the time today. I, I yeah. am being open to the experience. I really, this has been an awesome conversation. Well, thank, I really, you. thank you. I loved it. <laughs> I really, yeah. It's just, thank you so much for your time. And how, how does anybody reach out to you and connect with you online uh, on LinkedIn? Uh, yeah. Giving your handles, the business, all that stuff. Yep. Yeah. So best place to connect with me is LinkedIn. It's just Jason Vanna, V as in Victor, A-N-A, -A, um, is my handle. I put out content Monday through Friday. It's all about brand and content and how do you really uncover your di the differentiation for your business. I also send an email out every Monday. Um, it is a branding email. So if you like my LinkedIn content, my email is my LinkedIn content on steroids, more examples, more, uh, more how to's, more resources are in the email. You can subscribe to that on the website. Our website is 
shift.agency. Now we were trying to be cool, so there is no I. It's S-H-F-T dot agency. Um, we have a ton of resource, free resources on there, no email required. Um, that'll help you uncover your ideal customers, uncover your differentiation, do some competitive uh, research um, and analysis and really just grow your brand. So if if anything I said today resonated, that's where you can find me, LinkedIn, the email newsletter or the website. Um, and yeah, would love to talk to you awesome. and help you build your brand. Excellent. Thank you so much, Jason. You You're welcome. The rest of your day. You take care. You too. All right. If you have a story to share or you know someone with an inspiring journey, the Free Mind Podcast wants to hear from you. Submit your story or nominate somebody to be our next guest. Check out our website, thefreemindpodcast.com, and be a part of the conversation that truly matters. 